In late July of 2015, some of my fellow graduate students and I journeyed halfway around the world to India, finding ourselves in the mountains of the Western Ghats during the heart of the monsoon or wet season. We had come for many different reasons and with varying expectations, but had all decided to put ourselves in this new and challenging environment in hopes of the same goals. We wanted to immerse ourselves and learn about a community, culture, and ecosystem dramatically different from anything we had previously experienced, while still finding the common threads that run through humanity. We wanted to learn how each of us could be part of a positive solution to local and global ecological problems. It soon became clear that to understand India, its people, and its environmental issues, we had to first understand its past and its cultural influences, the first and foremost being their faith. Hinduism is one of the world's oldest religions, beginning in India about 4,000 years ago. It emphasizes viewing the self, the community, and the environment as interconnected and interdependent. This idea stems from this ancient religion's origin as a form of nature worship, instructing its followers to see the gods and their gifts in all aspects of nature. This respect for the environment not only provides spiritual fulfillment, but also communal benefit. This is seen most clearly in the establishment of sacred groves. Sacred groves are relic forest patches that have been protected and managed by local communities for generations and contain temples in reverence to particular deities. These areas contain large ancient trees called old growth forests, as well as rare native plants called endemic plant species, and can range in size from just a few acres to hundreds of acres. Their respected and secluded nature has helped them to survive relatively undisturbed for hundreds of years, allowing them to become reliable sources for not only medicinal plants, but also for clean water. Most streams, rivers, and wells originate near or within the sacred groves. Additionally, the heavy rains of the wet season can be naturally filtered by the grove's dense vegetation, yielding uncontaminated water. The presence of these resources adds to the area's sacred nature and provides important services to the rural population. Sacred groves are also culturally important, as various cultural and religious festivals are often arranged by local people within the temples. In many ways, these groves offer a sense of history and connection to India's past and present, as well as strong feelings of reverence and spirituality. The values and traditions of past generations are felt in these sacred spaces. Although Hinduism is still the most practiced religion in India, people have started to move away from its environmental and community-centric ideals. Because of this, India's over 13,000 documented sacred groves are threatened. Many have started to view these sacred groves as insignificant patches of forest that hinder further development. The culture is shifting in its values from intertwined to independent, from nature to net worth, from conservation to consumerism, and from ecology to economy. As these activities increase, the faith of the local people decreases and the forests are destroyed. Natural areas are also threatened because of the little to no government support. Most land protection laws have historically carried little weight and there are no incentives for local people to protect their land. Additionally, government organizations such as the Indian Ministry of Environment and Forests have limited resources to conserve or manage protected areas, let alone expand the currently existing protected lands. Subsequently, the protection and ownership of these groves falls to nearby villages. Many people are selling their land to be cleared or burned as it may be their only economic option. This has resulted in thousands of acres of fragmented or destroyed habitat, endangering not only hundreds of animal and plant species, but also the survival of rural and poor communities. It was this injustice and growing conservation issue that led to the creation of the AERF or the Applied Environmental Research Foundation, the organization which we had the opportunity of shadowing during our expedition. This non-governmental organization works to conserve biological diversity at the local level through a practice known as community-based conservation. This conservation method 
demonstrates the value that can come from involving local communities in the process of conservation. By interacting with the local people on their level, a space can be facilitated in which all stakeholders are seen as equals with common goals. Whether this means having a large community meeting or just sitting down with individuals in their homes, it is all important to the cause. This approach allows for more open communication, more diverse perspectives, and more stakeholders, making the conservation effort more likely to become self-sustaining. AERF has been successful in their efforts because of their unique approach of utilizing pre-existing local traditions and cultural significances in order to revive traditional approaches to nature. By focusing their efforts in the Northwestern Ghats, which has one of the highest densities of sacred groves in the country, AERF is able to directly link faith and conservation efforts to community livelihood and poverty alleviation. They are also able to respectfully educate and increase the community's environmental awareness while understanding the needs of the people by developing incentives, providing financial support, and promoting co-management opportunities. These positive interactions lead to community protection agreements, which legally bind community members to protect their surrounding lands and groves in exchange for monetary incentives comparable to what a logging or other development company would offer. This, along with education resources, allows conservation to be an economically and socially viable option. So far, AERF has restored multiple sacred groves, prevented further human and livestock encroachment, reintroduced threatened native plant species, started several school programs, and surveyed over a hundred new sacred groves. Their hope is to have saved at least 5,000 acres of forest from deforestation and degradation by the year 2020, securing these areas long-term conservation. Though all of this is promising, there is still so much destruction and so much work to be done. Every minute, 30 acres of forests are destroyed globally, and over 45% of our world's forests are already gone forever. But there is hope. As Archena Godbole, the founder of AERF, says, In conservation, you feel that what you are doing is not significant, so you have to keep working. As more people are educated and reached by these conservation stories, whether it be in the mountains of the Western Ghats or right here in your classroom, there is the potential for more good work to be done.